G'day guys, welcome along to another international ration review. This time around we've got a ration from Lithuania. Now I've had this one sitting on the, uh, sitting in the cupboard for a wee while now because I know that Gundog had done a Lithuanian ration and I was pretty sure that the one that I had was the same as his, but it turns out it's not. I believe his was a number two and I've got a number five. In terms of figuring out what difference that means, I've uh, I've tried my luck with the Google Translate on that, and couldn't really get anything, well, anything useful. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a case of wait and see, and we'll um, we might do some uh, subtitles afterwards. So it works out fun that way anyway. So here we go. The uh, it's a single meal. About. You know, if you squish all the excess packaging down in a US MRE, it's about the same size. You know, just without the extra extra height and width on the bag. The material, the plastic, seems fairly similar to the uh, US MRE, perhaps a little thinner. And uh, it's this uh, this very dark green colour. The only writing it has on the pack is the sticker. And on that sticker, we do have some kind of ingredients. I managed to translate a couple of the words. But um, what we also have, that I've just noticed, is a date down the bottom. So it looks like the 30th of September 2015. So I'm hoping that's a best before date. And we're going to be good to go with it. All right. So, we only have this tear at the top, there's no peelable seal or notches on the sides. Now let's rip in. Thank you, Doug. What have we got here? Almonds, yep, look like pretty, pretty standard almonds. We've got a date of 2015 on there. And there we go. Cool. Got the crackers or the kind of like the hard tack biscuits. Now these look very, very similar. To these ones here. I think they are, they're exactly the same. Now, oh, almost exactly the same. Now this pack here I just grabbed out of my um, my bag of ration extras, if you like, that you saw on the water purification vid. Uh, you know, the bits and bobs that I don't necessarily eat all of during a uh, review. You know, extra crackers, biscuits and things. But yeah, I think this one may have been out of the Polish ration. Could be wrong. It certainly looks like the same manufacturer. Mm. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the biscuits, four of them. Got a little zip lock, or over in New Zealand we call it a snap lock. Bag with a few bits and pieces in it. Uh, it looks like some kind of fruit, yeah, apricot jam, I'd say. Uh, coffee, instant coffee. Sugar, a lot of. That's a big pack. 12 grams. Um... This looks like it'll be a sports drink. Yep, orange flavor instant drink. Needs 600 mils. Chocolate, <laughs> great. Feels a little bit like it's uh, had a bit of heat and melted and 
reformed. Yeah, some funky contours going on there. Okay, it looks like we've got the ingredient list. Oh, it's in um, it's in English too. It's helpful. Pork stew with vegetables. It looks like we've got here. The accessory kit. With a uh, moist towelette. Matches. A broken spoon. <laughs> now, if you watch Gundog's videos, you'll see that he had um, a couple of dramas with his, uh, I guess, Eastern European type um, rations. And I can totally see what he means. This, this is one flimsy spoon and it's already broken. So I think we're going to have to bust out the trusty USMRE spoon for this one. We have our heating fuel tabs. Mysterious zip tie. I don't think Kundog figured out what this was for either. And uh, I'm just going to keep thinking about it during this review. <laughs> There's got to be a reason. Hmm. We have our portable stove or heater. Okay. Might as well do that now. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's not the most robust of these things that I've seen. Here we go. And this will be our main entree. Sealed in the box, just with some um, uh, sticky tape. Oh, cool. Okay. So we now know that this is, uh, what was it, pork sausage with vegetables? Pork stew with vegetables. And again, we've got a date of 2015, so I think we're good to go. Wait, there's more. Another warmer user manual. Okay, all in English too, that's pretty cool. Strip the warming bag from the top, remove the food packet. Okay, so this is, this is instructions for the flameless ration heater we have there, so that's pretty cool. Um, 60ml of water. Okay, alright. So I think it's got two ways you can do it. You can fold it over around the meal or you can uh, put it inside. I do believe though that the one that Gundog had, uh, he did mention it was um, Korean. I can't find anything like that here. What it does seem like is that the heating element inside, and you see how large that is, it uh, looks a lot bigger than the ones you get in the, the US MREs, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of performance we get out of that. It's not looking too bad here, actually. It's uh, you know it's pretty comprehensive. We are missing uh, things like salt, but it's okay. It's probably enough sodium in here. Uh, one thing that is interesting is that we've got the portable stove and the fuel tabs, also with the flameless ration heater. So you'd have to assume that the portable stove is in there to uh, make your brew or perhaps uh, sterilize your water, get up to the boil, um, or both. Now despite having the flameless ration heater in the pack, I don't really want to go without 
lighten one of these up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, boil up some water in a pot and that's what we use to make our coffee. There we go, we're away. And yeah, we'll see what we can do with one fuel tab. So while we wait for the water to boil, let's get the entree heating up. Principles are all the same as the USFRH. Slide our pouch inside. And fill up to that line. It's uh, 60 mil apparently. Slide it all down. And just get it horizontal slightly get that heating element totally wet. I think we'll bring the box back on board. Try to stuff it back in. There we go. We'll let that do its thing. It recommends about 12 minutes. I usually leave the US CFRHs for 15, but um, the heating element in this one seems a bit beefier, so we'll see how we go. Put a noise. This one seems to have a bit more of a, uh, a different bouquet, if you like, in the, the smell. Well, it's actually totally puffed up there, uh, reminiscent of the uh, kind of like the Japanese FRH, but. Yeah, that bag's under quite a bit of pressure, so I'm not going to aim it in my face. You can hear the FRH in the background bubbling away. And here's our pot, just starting to uh, get a little bit steamy. While we wait for the other stuff to heat up, let's have a look at uh, what else we have here. We'll start off by mixing up the sport drink. We've got 600 mils of water. And Gundogs noticed that his was very crystallized, so... Yep. Yeah. So is this one. Not your normal sort of powdered drink. There. Now due to the uh, big crystals in here, it's certainly not incorporating as quick as a normal powdered drink would. to the crackers. Now these say sucary, so I'm assuming these are the uh, sweeter ones, could be wrong. We've got a date of 2016 in there. So these things have some long legs. Our almonds. Look at our socolatus. 
I said that completely wrong, I'm sure. But our chocolate. I don't seem to have the best luck of chocolate with chocolate in these rations. <laughs> it's always a bit on the funky side. And this seems to be no exception. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, it's chocolate, Jim, but not as we know it. <laughs> I don't know what's happened there. We got some big cavitation that's uh, that's occurred. You can see. I don't know what's caused that huge sort of bubble in there. Uh, it's also a bit oxidized, but um, you know, I've eaten far worse. It smells okay. Magic. So let's have a look at our individual components here. The bickies we've seen before, or the crackers. Very tough little buggers. Smell, uh, there's not much of a smell to them, but um, yeah, it's, it's, what, what smell there is is pleasant. Pretty hard to break. And consequently, pretty hard to bite. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if these are the sweet ones. They've got that interesting, um, interesting flavour going on. Now, I think... You can see those flecks on there. Somebody mentioned they might be um, cumin. Shall we have a look? Well, <laughs> obviously it's it's all in a different language, but yeah, I think those specks are cumin. Could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it gives the cracker a nice little, I don't know, gourmet type edge to it. So let's see what it's like with a bit of the apricot jam on. Looks pretty standard. Oh, lovely apricot. Sweet apricot note coming off there. The texture's quite uh, gooey. I uh, usually expect something that's quite gelatinous. So that's a nice surprise. Mm. By itself, oh, it's great. It's probably a little on the sweeter side, which is fine by me because I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. We'll give it a whirl on the crackers. That's so nice. I'm going to finish that. It's really good. Yummy. Our almonds look uh, nice and uh, appealing. Pretty unadulterated, they're uh, yeah, they're not salted by the looks. Give them a try. Really good. Fresh, tasty, good snack. Now the chocolate looks like some kind of science experiment gone wrong. The surface of a planet or something. Hmm. Oh well, down the hatch. It tastes fine, despite appearances. And I found that with all um, oxidized and, you know, melted and reformed chocolate that appearances don't mean much. I'll eat that. Try our sports drink. Cheers. That's not bad. It's a little watery, but I think we ended up with some of the um, inner crystals at the bottom not really uh, dissolving too well. So that's good. I would have used less water myself.
the first fuel tab is nearly finished with the water. It hasn't quite got it up to the boil, but since I'm not going to be using it to disinfect the water, I don't really need it boiling anyway, so that temperature, steaming hot, is going to be good enough for me. Let's pop our coffee in. Very fine. Yeah, it's uh, it's not like your normal instant coffee. This very very fine. It's just a powder, like talcum powder consistency. But we're gonna sugar the heck out of it. And we don't have any whitener or um, or creamer in this. So, you know, I understand that's how a lot of people do take their coffee, so we'll have it black. And we'll have it fairly strong. We'll see what this coffee's all about. Okay, let's try it. We know it's not boiling, but it is still very hot. That's really, um, that's really quite interesting. I think the sugar has definitely sweetened it up a lot. Um, but potentially, you know, boiling the water or heating the water up in a, a pot normally used for cooking, uh, it gives it something a little bit extra. <laughs> it might have been last night's dinner, I'm not sure, but yeah, there's something else going on in that coffee. So guys, it's time to break out the entree. We'll see how that flameless ration heater is, is done. Here we go. Feels very hot to the touch. Oh, it's extremely hot. What I did notice is that they do have some tear marks along the side too, so potentially you could uh, Open it up there and make it a little bit easier to get out of the top, I guess. Yeah, it's hot. It's not as hot, actually, as I would have... You know, all the... The noise and fanfare would have suggested, but... Hmm, okay. So pork stew with vegetables, I believe. Yeah, it's quite yellow. Let's have a smell. It smells good. Here she comes. Looks very stew-like. We got, it's almost like a pork mince, I would say. It's, uh, yeah, all of these more solid bits that you see of the pork just break apart when you touch them. It does seem to be a lot of meat in here and a thick gravy. Um, it's fairly hard to determine where the vegetables are. They do look like very small pieces. I see a bit of orange in there, carrot, and what looks potentially like potato. So, give it a try. That's quite nice. And for some more. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be fairly hard pressed. You know, if you didn't know it was pork, to determine exactly what meat it is. You know, because it's surrounded in this thick, hearty stew gravy. Um, it tastes like a, like a meat pie filling. It's got that uh, savoury, salty... You know, I can see why there was no salt in here. This definitely tastes like there's enough in this. 
I think it would have been quite nice with some pepper. But all in all, a nice hearty hot entree. It's quite nice on the crackers. Um, I prefer the jam on the crackers, but I'm going to do what Gun Dog would do here. So this is for you, Gun Dog. Try it that way. That's nice. <laughs> it really adds some decent texture to it. It needs a crunch. It's all very soft. So. Mm. All right, honey, you want to try some Lithuanian soldier food this time? I know. That's pork stew. I know. No, you don't. <laughs> what do you think about that one? Heavy. Yeah? What does it taste like? Um, meat. It does taste like meat, doesn't it? It's quite meaty. All right. And you got some... Nuts! Yep. Um. You like those? Shock it. <laughs> What do you think of the chocolate? You're a bit of a chocolate uh, connoisseur. Yeah, me chocolate. Oh, okay. Now, just be careful with that one. It's quite hard to bite through the crackers, but that's apricot jam on the cracker. Mm. Pretty hard, eh? <laughs> oh. Going in for seconds. Huh? Nothing. Keep going. Is it nice? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And you got some drink there if you want to wash it down. Huh? You got some drink there too. Is that orange? Mm-hmm. Juice. Well, not juice, juice. It's orange juice. <laughs> Why are you tricking me? I didn't trick you. So what do you think of the Lithuanian uh, army ration? Yummy! Yummy. Does it get a thumbs up or a thumbs down? A thumbs up. Okay. Thanks for watching YouTube. See you next time. Bye! Thanks for watching guys.